Watch whatever you heard. And uh, with God's help, uh, come away from a uh, you know, Christian worldview on it. You're all right, you know. And a lot of t- and most of the movies and music, you're, you're, the line of moral and what's right and wrong is going to be blurred. But you got to pay attention, and you know you'll learn something out of it. Pay attention to what's wrong and what's right out of it. And learn something and go away with a lesson that God's taught you by listening to, watching it, whatever. If you can't, if you don't know what you believe, why you believe it, and how to do the work of ministry and the essential doctrines of the Christian faith, well, you might be tossed through and fall like it says in James. The, because the Bible doesn't sugarcoat life, you know. The Bible tells it how it's straight. Even though the Word of God is inspired by God, doesn't necessarily mean all the wrongs that were committed in the Old and New Testament God approves of. Those things that don't line up with God's truth and righteousness, God disapproves of. But most of the Bible is about crooks and stuff, and prostitutes and so forth. Because we're all crooks and prostitutes and so forth. Do a few good things, and then we do fifty. We do a couple of good things, and then we do fifty wrong things that cancel out the good things. Even though the scriptures are inspired by God, doesn't necessarily mean He approves of all of it. Like polygamy, for instance, He didn't approve of polygamy, but the fount, the uh, uh, patriarch still did it, even though the scripture said in Genesis. One woman and one man. God's about the truth, period. And you can find the truth in music. You can find the truth in books you read. You can find the truth in movies you watch. But you got to know, you got to have a sound Christian theistic Christian worldview so you can discern from wheat and chaff when it comes to movies and stuff and music. If you can't do that, you're a weak Christian and you should stay away from it, period, until you're strong Christian and you're starting to eat meat. And I'm about meat. Start with milk in my teaching and then I move to meat. And the goal is to move you from milk to meat. Solid foods. Eight and nine. Those nations will fall down and collapse, but we will be raised up and stand firm. Give victory to our King, O Lord. Answer our cries for help. And and that's exactly what's going to be what's going to happen, period. What about the Mafia Dons? What about the Russian mob? What about this and what about that? What about these crazy dictators? What about our crazy politicians and so forth? Seems like every day, every single day, God's losing, and the Kenites, and the communists, the socialists, the Marxists, the tree huggers, 
the PCs, are winning and we're losing. It's getting to the point in my society, in our society that you can't say Merry Christmas. You gotta say Happy Holidays or you gotta say Christmas trees put up, you gotta say a holiday tree or whatever. I'm here to tell you to just tell those guys to stuff it. Because if you want to say Merry Christmas, you say Merry Christmas. What are they going to do? Lock you up? Throw, throw away the key? Maybe someday. But no matter what comes your way, no matter what kind of affliction, what kind of trials, and the accomplishments, it seems like the communists, the socialists, the Marxists, the pre-uggers, the Kenites and so forth are accomplishing. It seems like we're losing the battle. And what am I supposed to do? You're supposed to get out there and make a change. Don't like something, change it. Don't like the politicians in the United States, fire them. Now they may be winning some battles. They may be winning a few battles. They may be winning 50 battles. But when the end of the day, everything is said and done, who's going to win the war? Who's going to win the war? Our precious Savior, Jesus Christ. And the enemy is going to be defeated. And I'm here to guarantee you, just around the corner there's going to be a victory of the battles that come your way. And if you don't think any victories and battles and things has been won in your life, look back at your life, five, ten, six, one year, two years, and you'll see that God has made some changes because God says... He that done a good work is going to carry it to completion. Glory! Hallelujah! What does God want you to say? Oh, I'm going to get in some trouble here. My Irish and Scottish is acting up here. Some of my Germans acting up here. Some of my Baptists is coming out. Oh, look out. And some of my old school Pentecostals is coming out. And what does God want you to say when it seems like all your your hands and feet are tied and you can't do nothing or go anywhere? God wants you to say, I give you praise, Lord God, because I may be losing this battle today, but I know tomorrow or the next week or three weeks from now, I'm going to win the battle but eventually you're going to win the war. And all you got to say is, Satan, Kenites, you stupid fucks, you're fucking with the wrong motherfuckers. You're fucking with God's elect and very elect and anointed. Glory! Hallelujah! Turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, those stupid fucking Kenites are going to get their fucking asses kicked. Oh, excuse my language, Lord God. I'm sorry. You know, and those stupid motherfuckers are so stupid. Those Kenites, those fucking... Communist, socialist, Marxist, and tree huggers. Harmonism, philosophical naturalist, fuckers, they think they're winning. They think by banning anything that points to Christ and Christianity that they're 
winning. But God's just kicking back, just like, just getting a kick out of it. Just laughing his head off. Because for a while, the, you know, the atheists were winning with their Darwinist theory and so forth, and then, and their little tree of transitional forms to the next kind, uh, micro, uh, macro evolution. Micro evolution's a fact, but macro evolution's a bunch of uh, baloney, phony, fucking garbage coming out their ears. And God just kicks back and watches them do their little whatever, testing us in our faith, and then God decides, oh, I've had enough of this stuff, and then the wall, the rocks start talking, and then all of a sudden, after a while, letting them little stew in their crap, evidence starts pointing towards him. Why? Well, because it's always been there. But God was just kicking back, just getting a kick out of watching these fools and morons con try to convince a whole society that God's a bunch of nonsense, a little fairy tale. And God got a little kick out of it, testing our faith, but... He got tired of and said, ah, this is enough of this garbage. And then all the evidence, they thought they had all the evidence. And then God says, what? And played her the ego. And of course, all the evidence, as it always has, is pointing to a designer. And the atheists are losing the battle. And they're getting pissed off and getting angry. And... God's just getting a kick out of him. And any time an atheist tells you that, that you're a stupid fuck, tell them you're a stupid, f tell them they're a stupid fuck. Because their evidence is just a bunch of crap. Oh, anyways. Boy, am I going to do some serious repenting after this message. Boy, am I going to do some serious repentance. Anyways, that's... Anyways, just, keep, just to give you something to reflect, meditate on, and so forth. Glory, hallelujah. Give Him praise and glory. Let's close with the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask you to hide these words in our hearts and minds and empower us to put into practice these truths. In Christ Jesus' name we pray through the power of the Holy Ghost and ask in the Jesus Christ's name through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. God bless you until next time. Happy New Year.